I'm Christy Hartman. Welcome back to my channel. This is part two. In part one, we developed the long haul and we pulled a print. In part two, we're going to develop canvases from our long haul print. Now in the video, you're only going to see me paint this one for the most part. Different paint colors on the stems, this one I laid down orange first, shaded with my Napa Red. This one the same thing. You're going to see me paint this one. Use the same paint color for all three hats. Did the beards exactly the same. What you're going to see me concentrate on is painting the poinsettia, painting the beard. Then at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a little bit easier way to paint the beard. This is painted exactly the same way that I painted all these. I show you how to paint this stem, which is also painted the same way as this one. This one is a turquoise blue, and then I shaded with a darker blue. Same process, just a little different paint color. This poinsettia uses the same colors as this. The beard with this gnome is painted with a Posca marker and I show you how to do that. And for those of you who are painters, you're going to see how to use a long haul print or a stenciled print to use as your line art for a painting. For those of you that are gel printers, you're going to see how to add some interesting detail that turns it into and would be a good gift. I have three canvases here and I'm painting each one of these canvases with Daniel Smith acrylic gesso, iridescent gold, and you can use it just as like paint that's the quality of the gesso. That it is just bright and shimmery and a beautiful gold. So I have one coat on each one of these. I had black on this one before and I decided I wanted it gold. Here are two of them. This is the one that was painted black and it just kind of darkened up the gold. You can still see the black through it. I kind of like the way it looks so I'm going to use it. I think I'm going to put this one on. This one will go here. The third one, I decided to use this one. I decided to use matte medium. I have this piece plus these three canvases and some different paint colors. This is called Tangelo Orange and this is called Napa Red. We're going to use a stylus and I'm just going to dot. And the nice thing about this is because I'm using this piece that was my long haul. For those of you who have painted before, I don't need to transfer the design. Let's do the same thing with this one. We're going to use the red for this one too. So on this orange, I'm going to dot a highlight with this moon yellow and I'm going with a slightly smaller stylus. I added with a little bit of a black line pencil, but I'm going to paint in the pattern right on this leaf. And I'm using red, the same red that I used in the center. I do think it's important as a composition to repeat the paint colors that you've used in your piece. And I left the green from the background. And I'm it's 
going to take a little bit of orange and I'm just going to put just a little bit of a dry brushed highlight right in the centers of those. Just a little bit of neon yellow and it'll just make that highlight pop. I'm going to use evergreen because I have one leaf up here that I did not get the background color in. This is quite a bit lighter. This is called olive green. I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing here. A small angle brush. Get it good and wet. Take a darker color. Let's just use this soft black back and forth, spread that paint, and we could actually come in here and cast a shadow. Like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just using black and this is just lamp black. You could also do the same thing with a black Posca pen. I ended up using the Posca pen and I added some line work onto those leaves as well. So I'm going to paint this gnome so he shows up a little bit better. So I'm just using a little flesh tone paint. I'll probably give that another coat. I'm going to give his little nose a quick shadow and I'm just using it's called dried clay and it makes a really really nice shadow for anything flesh tone. I added one coat of this Santa Red to my hat and his legs and this arm. And I'm going to put a second coat on here. And I'm going to use now a little bit of Napa Red. And I'm just going to add a shadow. And I'm just going to use a round brush. This is a, a zero round brush and I'm thinning my paint down so it's relatively thin and I've kind of flattened I don't know if you can see that, I've flattened my brush out a little bit and I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow here white and I'm just going to thin it way, way down so it's really, really watery. 
I'm going to take some of the excess moisture out of my brush and then I'm just gently going to add in a few areas that might be a little lighter. Got a little bit of that neon and I'm just going to thin it way down and go over the top of that white. I'm going to do the same thing down on his legs. I'm just going to give him a little bit of a highlight here and here and on his arm. And if I look at that, which I am right now, and I think that's a little too bold, I can come back in with my shading color and just kind of take that down just a little bit. Now down here, I may take a little bit of that neon color and just go right over the top of this. Let's paint this guy's beard. We're just going to use, a, this is a zero round. We're going to use a little bit of this warm white. You could use a titanium white. It shows you the direction that the beard needs to be painted in. I'm going to add a second coat to it. Now this is asphaltum to use it as a shading color to give our gnome's beard a little depth. And I'm not going to worry about if this is dry or not. I'm going to go back in with my white. Remember this is called warm white. And I'm just going to go right over the top of this. I'm going to go back into this with a little bit of this Snow White or it's just Titanium White. This is a super fine point brush. This is a 20 aught. And when you use a liner brush, thin your paint down to a very thin, inky consistency. So it flows off of your brush nicely. With a good liner brush, you can do all of that fine detail and give this little guy a really thin, wispy beard. Now I want to take my liner brush, take some of this asphaltum, thin it way down, go back in and add your white in again. This is truly a layering process. I'm going to take my angle brush, and I've shown you this technique before. Okay, and we're going to do a, just a float right underneath his nose. With your liner brush, load it again with that titanium white, and just come in again. And this time I'm kind of going over those spots that I didn't go over. Now, if you are someone who feels like this is not something that you're comfortable with, you can also use your Posca pen. And this is the PC1MR. You can add in some white with your Posca pen. I'm going to use a piece of Punchinello and I've got some gold paint. It's just this fluid acrylic media metallic. Load this brush 
I'll lay my punchinella down and I'm just gonna randomly swirl over the top, check it, yeah, I like that. Okay, I think that works. Let's work on the, this a little bit. I think what I'm going to do to this is I'm going to paint this stem just a thin, because I don't want to lose all this good stuff in the leaves, but it needs a little bit of color. So I'm just going to wash this light green into my leaves and my stem, and I'm using a super thin down application of just a light, light green. We're gonna add a little bit more shading, not to the leaves, but to the stem. And I'm just, I'm using this kind of turquoise blue color. And I'm going to lay in this color lightly and then just blend it out with a clean wet brush. Now this one, I thought we would do his beard with just the white Posca pen. I'm just going to come in with, just to give you another example of what you can do with these. I think we'll go over it again. I thought it might be kind of fun to add a little bit of a shadow with just a drawing pencil. This is a 4B. And this is good for people that aren't as comfortable painting, but they want to add some shadows. Now, let's take this blending stump, and this is this is a royal. I think this is a half inch. Let's come back in with our white. I think that's looking pretty good. That was pretty easy. And there we have him. An easy way to do his beard if you don't want to paint. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the difference in painting these two. I hope you enjoyed seeing how you can take a print that uses a stencil and turn it into a painted piece. Don't forget to subscribe like, comment, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in my next video.